Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. So today, I'm doing a client session, which is what I always do on my channel. <laughs> ah, gonna be sharing distant psychic wisdom and energy healing. The goals here focusing on what could potentially be a family curse, an entity attachment, there's a bit of mystery behind it. I'm, I'm very curious to see what comes forward and I wanna thank you so very much for this opportunity. Uh, this stuff intrigues me and you did such a good job of putting it into words as best you could what it feels like to you and what you're trying to accomplish today. Thank you so very much for reaching out. So glad you reached out for some support. <laughs> Naturally, I, I'm very curious. So this is right up my alley. Thank you for sharing with us here on YouTube. I know you were mentioning there's a YouTube video that you watched that was helpful for you. And now you get to be that YouTube video that's going to be helpful for someone else. So <laughs> you see how this domino effect of love happens? It's really cool. So thank you. All right. I'm going to read your goals and then we're going to get started here. So this is what you say. Hello, Abby. I recently gave a listen to a session you gave to someone about a dark energy that they've been dealing with. Then I thought, why in the world haven't I thought of asking her about mine? So you say, explaining this energy is a bit complicated. I feel it to be a dark energy, yet the word evil doesn't come to mind. Annoying sure comes to mind, however. I'm sure you'll see for yourself. However, to my understanding, this is a generational curse that came from both sides of my family. I was told that this is a possession, and to be honest, that did resonate with me. So it did resonate with you that this is a possession. Not in the same way as the movies. Supposedly, both curses from each side of my family skipped a few generations and landed on me and is now whatever this energy is. I try not to say entity because I feel that is somehow more that it, this is somehow more than one or some sort of portal. And not that I would notice, but to my understanding, I am missing maybe seven years of my life as a result of this energy. But ultimately, I don't feel I know anything aside from it is with me. Is it something I'm meant to integrate into myself? Is it something I'm meant to finally rid my family of? What is this? Who is this? How do I heal from it or heal it? And what purpose does it serve? Yeah, like, <laughs> I want to know the answers to these questions too. Okay. You did such a good job of putting into words as, as honestly, right? I mean, you even said that I was told that this is a possession, and to be honest, that did resonate with me. Um, but it doesn't feel evil, and you don't really feel comfortable calling it an entity, and it seems somehow more than one or perhaps a portal, and maybe you're going to miss seven years of your life, That not that you would notice. <laughs> All these things are kind of adding up to trying to determine, put your finger on some kind of logic about it at least based upon how it makes you feel and your experience of it. Okay. So here we go with the questions. Is it something I meant to integrate into myself? What an interesting thing to say. Because most people, they want nothing to do with this kind of energy. So why would they want to integrate it into themselves? So the fact that you're bold enough to ask that question, I think is powerful. So we'll explore it. I mean, why can't we just throw it out there and just see? And is it something I meant to finally rid my family of? Also, also an excellent question. So maybe it, maybe you are the last of this generational curse, you know? So what is it and who is it? How do I heal from it or heal it? And what purpose does it serve? Okay. Evil doesn't come to mind, but annoying comes to mind. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going to relax now. And we are going to get to the root of this, okay? Hmm.
So, okay, so yes, I'm seeing a first picture and I also experience something as, it's almost like two messages in one. The picture is its own message and then the feeling is its own message. So the picture is basically, it's you, but you are more like a skeleton, an animated skeleton. And then there's this kind of goo, it's just like a black goo that's just on your head. And it's not like it drips to the ground, it kind of holds itself contained. It's almost like if somebody threw a wet towel and it just like hit around your head, but now turn into like a black gooey substance. There seems to be eyeballs all inside of this, okay? So I was shown this picture. Um, obviously we're talking about something on the darker side of things. This is the first image. Um, I don't know, it doesn't tell me a whole lot other than what it looks like. Uh, so I like to go deeper, obviously, than just that. Now the feeling that comes to me with its, which is its own message, is sometimes what we see isn't necessarily the entire path. Um, we got to close our eyes and be a little bit blind and um, feel our way through this one. So I'm kind of like, well, I can pursue this image, yes, but I also need to close my eyes and just feel. And when I close my eyes to feel, I'm part of another image. And that image is, well, I want to say it's both a golden light and a dark light, okay? Like black that glows and golden that glows. Somehow intermixed. And I feel like I have a candle in my heart. And the candle inside my heart creates that golden light, but I'm hugged by this other dark light that glows, this black that glows. So the first scene, the first image, and with the dark goo on the head, I don't want to discredit it. It's just vibrationally, it's um, thin. And, and so it doesn't give me a lot of juice. It doesn't give me, it's kind of like an empty cup. It just is what it is. This here feels like it has more depth. So I'm gonna recall, I'm like, remember that first picture and see if it changes or provides more information in time. It's just like one apple on a tree. But this feels like more of a path and more development, okay? So I basically have a candle in my heart and Now, okay, now, yeah, you. it's time to open the eyes. It's time to open the eyes. The heart sees clearly. It's time to open the eyes. Because now that we're acclimating to this scene with the feelings, with the heart, the candle in the heart, the golden light, the black that glows, there's people here. And we need to see these people. We actually need to see them. So there's, there's this, this resistance of opening what is like the third eye and then using it to see some dead people. <laughs> that's, that's what this makes me feel like. Do I really want to look at their faces? I don't. I don't really want to. Because I just don't really feel like that's what I want to do. And actually that's what, that's what the scene is asking for. It's to look at what you don't want to look at. And it's like dead people and it's kind of the rotted flesh, flesh bodies and they're underground. And it's kind of like a family of people that are the half dead. They're like the dead and the living and they're rotted away corpses, but they're, they're looking and, and it's not one. It's just like you say, in these faces, it's, it's not just one face, there's m many faces down here. This is extremely uncomfortable. It's extremely weird feeling, like um, from a human perspective. It's just weird, okay? So we're gonna let it be what it is. It is weird. It is weird. It is uncomfortable and it is weird. Is curse the right word? I know that you yourself are trying to put a language to it, which gives it some parameters and some definition. Um, I don't know that curse 
is the right word. Maybe gift is a better word. That this is some sort of generational gift. What if it's like the I see dead people gift, you know? <laughs> what if it's the sixth sense gift? <laughs> but maybe the way that you're equipped to translate it is a little bit on the weird and creepy side. Um, pre preferably prefer to see angels and beautiful faces instead of the rotting corpse faces, you know? <laughs> so maybe that's why it leans in the direction of curse over gift. <laughs> that's what I'm experiencing so far. I have to do something with that first picture. It just keeps like tugging at me. Don't discredit it. Don't discredit it. Yeah, it's the first thing you see. Yeah, vibrationally, it's pretty thin, you know. But it's it's important. And so I'm going to bring this picture and I'm going to like put it on, maybe print it and like have a photograph of it. And I have it, okay? I'm going to take it here with me and we're in this, you know, glowing space with the dead people. I'm you and you are me right now. I'm, I'm kind of um, moving around, so I kind of move my consciousness out and then come back. So we're still kind of standing in the same shoes down here, same candle in our hearts and the golden light and the black glow and the faces. Then I have this Polaroid is what it's like. It looks different down here, actually. It's much creepier. And it is, there is a, I would say the best kind of Hollywood movie that could depict the experience is a bit of, a, of an unsolved spooky mystery. But it's not really a horror movie. It's, it's got uh, that, that feeling of, of fear and the feeling of uncertainty but it ends up having this positive end to the story. This, this new level of clarity that isn't in the fear, but is in the sort of awakening. That that's what this whole thing has been about. Oh my gosh. And it, it starts so uncomfortable and so many questions and so like the haunted house. But it ends up being this angelic story all along. We just could never have conceived of it to be that way. So, so far what's coming to me is there might be more of an angelic twist to this curse, which I, I'm going to start calling gift. So an angelic twist on this gift. And I guarantee you hearing me say that is already going to plant some new seeds that, is that, how does that feel to you? Does it feel like that's possible here? That maybe it wasn't really given room to be a possibility. When it's given room to be a possibility, it starts to expand the experience. And it starts to move the energy from something uncomfortable to something possibly quite beautiful. So, still a lot of unanswered questions, right? But we're a lot more together, a lot more, I guess, open-hearted. This Polaroid, you know, with the towel, which is like this black goo and the eyeballs and stuff. I don't know how to understand. It's like a clue to the Hollywood movie mystery of your life. And uh, um, I don't know how to understand it. It's like a dead person, but their face is... It's almost like maybe the lighting was off or something was off on the camera, a piece of dust on the lens or something. But it's on the face. So the face is just like maybe got this burned mark, like... Um, press a thumb into it and, you know, press some kind of like burn mark into the picture right there. So you can't see the face. But there's a sense of a horror, a fear, a terror um, about what is um, the end of one's life in this picture. That we can't understand the end of their life other than it's bl blotted out. It's um, a ca shadow cast upon it. We can't see the face of it. And there's a lot of grief and sadness, a lot of, it's like the sense of murder would be a terrifying thing, you know? So that, that is also a part of this Polaroid, a part of the first picture. And we're bringing it down here. I feel that you have access to the voices of your ancestors. And that while these are the, ha the living dead faces, I'm not convinced that they're going to stay that way. 
It's just how you are choosing to energetically translate this. Once this becomes an angelic gift, that might give it the whole thing permission to be way more beautiful than you were allowing it to be translated before. And even other family members. Because that might be their fear and their knowledge comes from their fear. But your knowledge doesn't have to come from fear. I will say another detail. Okay, how would I put this to words? There's such a level of sensitivity here that it could bleed in between day-to-day -day human life and a spiritual gift, a psychic knack. So for me, you know, different times of my life, it, it, it was all, like I felt like I lived more in the spirit world than I lived on planet Earth. Um, even though I was here doing the day-to-day -day rhythm, I always felt more of a connection to beyond here. So my exchanges with Beyond here were all the time. And so it was always bleeding into day-to-day -day life for me because it was everyday life. Well, now I do this work as a professional. And because I do this work as a professional, I, I have to have boundaries between my human experience, which I, am in, I embrace my human experience. I didn't come here to be a spirit. I came here to be a human being. So I, I embrace my human experience and then I, I have boundaries between the time that I do my psychic intuitive work and then the time that I do my human work, okay? Um, so, but my experience with this um, so far is that the, there's a sensitivity level to it that it could communicate with you. I, I'm not sure what the boundaries would be but it seems like it could communicate you with you at random times and be quite felt. Maybe even a little bit triggering and, dis and uncomfortable when it's felt. And so that might take some practice to adjust. I'm going to give you an example of... Um, this is just one time this happened, but it really threw me for a loop and I didn't expect it. But I was on this... Um, I was trying something with affirmations. And I was saying, you know, I astral travel, I see the future clearly. And I wanted to have visions, like visions of real human life. It, it's like my, my experience is always creative and interpreting energy and letting it be exactly as it wants to express itself. So it's always going to look creative. But I really like to see the logical human world that we all translate it collectively looks like this. Um, instead of it being a blue sky, it, you know, that we would see in our practical perception of things, you know, in my intuitive energy perception of things, it's an infinite universe. So it's every single color, bajillion doorways, every dimension, and it's not really a sky. It's actually a ground of another universe and blah, blah, blah. It's like on and 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 on infinite layers of truth. Um, so, um, so in what I'm going to tell you is, I, I wanted to have these, I wanted to just use affirmations, take ownership that I wanted to have like logical visions, okay, of the future. I wanted to see the future. So I was saying, I, f I see the future clearly. Well, I had this crazy experience where um, I did this for about two weeks and then payoff happened, okay, <laughs> really randomly and not what I expected. So I went to sleep. And I, somewhere around midnight, 1 a.m., um, this is my vague memory of it because it's been several years now. I remember looking at the time and then I remember something caught my attention because there was this loud noise outside in the parking lot. And there was this argument between this couple. Maybe they were drunk. I don't know. The music was blaring. I, I, I heard, heard the argument. I don't know what they were saying to each other, but I could hear, hear argument and that song. Anyway, I just kind of was lingering, looking out the window like, what a weird thing to wake up to here. And all of a sudden I got filled with this terrible, fearful sensation. But I wasn't actually awake, I was in a dream. Now that fearful sensation woke me up out of the dream. And when I woke up from the dream, I checked the time and it was the exact si same time as in my, in my dream, which was just mere seconds ago. That song was playing, those people were arguing and I'm pulled into Re, like reality that was melding with a dream state and that fear started to come over me not by choice it just happened and when it happened I, I started to hyperventilate okay like I started to freak out a bit not because I meant to it just happened like that 
anyway, I didn't I, I didn't want that fear to get in the way and it wasn't like I was consciously choosing it. It was something that freaked me out between a vision of reality and then real reality. And it was freaking me out. So it wasn't a cursed event. It wasn't an evil event. Um, I'm sure if it happened all the time and I was always kind of fearful of it, it'd probably be annoying, right? Is it people or is it a portal? Um, so something um, is coming to me that reminds me of how I wanted to have a clear vision and it was it was allowed and it was bleeding between two different realms of perception human and some intuitive thing and it created fear so i'm paralleling my memory of this to the way that this space feels that that it's without really having to state affirmations it's just kind of happening like bleeding between day-to-day -day human life and it's a bit of a fearful concept. It seems to fill with a bit of anxiety or, or fear. I don't know if anxiety is the right word. It just feels a bit uncomfortable. But I'm convinced if you keep practicing and you keep not being afraid, the words, should I integrate this into myself? Am I the end of this curse? You might be the beginning of interpreting, interpreting it in a new way. You might be the beginning of interpreting it in a way as a gift. So that it'll never be considered a curse ever again. And if you learn how to work with it, you'll be able to teach others in your family and the history, like um, younger generations that might be blessed with this, how to work with it. And so in that case, there's going to be an adaptation. In that case, then yes, you would be integrating into it because you're not resisting it. You're not afraid of it. You're going to say, okay, I'm going to give this a try. Um, show me what is this. It seems to me that it's the I see dead people gift, <laughs> but um, but let's just uh, keep following along, shall we? Okay. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you, okay, so your soul's totally capable. I, I mean, I'm supposed to state this. I, I suddenly got a, a sense of the strength of your soul. And the strength of your soul is familiar with uh, interpreting beyond just the human senses and being capable of doing that and bringing it back through the human senses to share with other human beings. And I, I just saw this sort of strong golden energy about you and that you, you're coming into this life equipped, okay? You're not coming into this life... Um, I don't know, a few crayons short of the box, right? You're coming to, into this life equipped and you're going to remember how to do this work. Like you, you're coming into this life capable of this, okay? So, okay, so let's just look at these faces for a minute. It seems to be faces of ancestors of yours, but it starts to feel like it shifts into other people's deceased relatives. Even so much as, can you tell me more about this uh, Jane Doe that died? Even so much as that, like a murder mystery. Like this Polaroid with the faces blurred out, but we want to know more about who this is and what happened to them. Where Abby's talent is reading how energies interact and in a way that I can translate into practical English language to create a different sense of relationship from the inside, the emotional, mental aspects of the human being, the heart of a human being, right into feeling more of a expanded awareness, a comfort, a self-love, an overcoming of the ego, and all that. That's my talent, right? This seems to me like you could perhaps unravel the mystery of how someone died. Because that's how it feels when I look at all this information energetically, that's how it makes me feel. I feel comfortable here. I feel safe here, and I'm not afraid of the dark either. I'm not afraid of the dark energetically. If someone, my soul lingers around darker environments, I, I'm actually full of light, just like you.
So again, it's just another parallel to what you're coming in with capability. What I'm doing is I'm kind of sending it information out. Can we get to know some of these faces? But it's not allowing me to do that just yet. So I just have to kind of wait and listen to what comes next. So I'm just going to relax here. Okay, the next thing they want me to do, it's not necessarily who are these faces and get answers. It's you have a major build up here on the front side of your heart and the back side of your heart. And I, I'm literally, it says weird as imagine a ginormous tomato <laughs> and then stick your hand into it. <laughs> you might have the, the tough skin, but it's not that tough a skin. It's kind of squishable, and I feel like sticking my hand into this energy. It's like, wow, that goes in a long way. And it's weird feeling. And it wants to stay solid, but it's about as solid as a tomato. <laughs> That's scary to you. That's uncomfortable. All of a sudden, you it, it's interesting because you and I are kind of mind-melded. <laughs> and uh, when I touch this build-up here and my arm goes in, you leave the part of yourself that I'm moving my arm into and you become part of my mind. And you tell me that this, this really freaks you out, like this is g gross or disturbing. And I, I, I laugh and I say, why don't we just like call it a slip and slide? Like, let's just go in here and just, it's another weird thing, yeah. Uh, but we can turn it into something a little bit maybe full of laughter, even if it's creepy. So let's just go in the slip and slide of the tomato buildup that you've got going on here. <laughs> and we don't have to look at it as though it's murderous and scary, but we can look at it as though it's just what it is, you know? And turn it into a weird slip and slide. <laughs> You start to cry, and your tears are kind of stained. They just, uh, they are seen. I see your tears. They have a blackish red tint to them, so I see your tears. And they don't drip, really. They just kind of create streaks. <laughs> they kind of, like, create these, I don't know, like, uh, paint <laughs> streaks here. And... Okay, I tell you that we need, I, I, I almost say, because when we are mind melded, it's going to make it harder for me to interpret this on my own. So I kind of pull your consciousness out. But what I do is I put you into an orb of light. And you can just be like a little bubble that's around, but I'm going to ignore you. So I can interpret this for myself. It's full of a flesh, flesh of decaying bodies is what it is. Lots of flesh of decaying bodies. I don't know if this was just one war or if it goes across uh, spans of time or maybe people died of the Black Plague or I don't know if it's a war plus Black Plague plus um, it just seems like decaying bodies. Lots and lots and lots and lots of decaying bodies across the span of time. And it's a rot. It's like a rot uh, to it. I'm listening right now. My eyes are closed. I'm just listening so that when I listen, I could be transported to a new scene. This isn't necessarily a purgatory space. Remember, this is built up around you, and it has to do with the heart of who you are. This might also be part of the curse, the gift, um, but this energy's got to be broken down. It's very disorienting. It's very confusing. This would not... I feel like this would be a distraction and a conflict in translating um, spirit visitors... Uh, with something that's built up in the energy fields would get in the way of the translation. Okay, I'm kind of taken to... I want to... Okay. 
I don't want to define this as a purgatory because purgatory could be like, um, we can even parallel, even as we're a living human being, we can parallel perhaps um, soul fragmented parts that are just almost like forever drifting in a fog of, of never finding themselves, never finding their way, never finding the answer forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and see a sea of souls like this. And it's a really massive space and it's in conjunction with planet Earth because this is our work to do here. Other souls from other galaxies and such want to help us with this work, but ultimately that's what our souls came here to do is to start healing this planet, healing interdimensionally this planet, the purgatory and the hell of this planet, as well as birth heaven here on earth, right? So that's what we're accomplishing, but we've got a lot in the way. And that's why people and their behaviors as human beings get distracted and disoriented by where their soul is and the way we treat each other and all of it's all mucked together. It's got to be really clear on who am I and what am I choosing? Is there something else influencing my decision to be more chaotic or more angry or more afraid of saying my truth? Because it could be a past life thing. It could be whatever. So there's a lot we're up against here. That's why we have to always know who the who I am is, is a self-discovery thing over a lifetime. But really get a sense for what is this decision? Is this the decision that I'm making or am I influenced by something outside myself? This does not represent to me a purgatory. You are intertwined with a purgatory somehow. You're digesting the hell of souls somehow in conjunction with a gift that seems to be a generational thing. Um, there's just the only jam is is the the lack of clarity is the only jam here. But you've got a whole lifetime to explore what this is. And I would see it as an adventure. Like arche like an Indiana Jones, like a an archaeologist that finds some really cool, like mysterious ruins and turn it into the Hollywood movie we all want to watch. And it's like your life story, you know? <laughs> so this is more like a hell space, the living hell space where souls are collectively gathering and it's all full of rot and there's strange creatures here. They're white skinned. They have really elongated pointy ears. They're really sharp teeth, kind of like goblins. But they, they're ripping flesh. They're just always with these clawed hands, just ripping flesh and eating this flesh. Always. I don't know where they get these bodies from. I don't realize they're consuming other souls. Souls are forever. So they can't just consume a soul to death. It already died. So it's just like souls giving up and just letting themselves be consumed by demons. But you can see why I need to heal this because this buildup is no good. <laughs> that means you're interdimensionally connected to a pretty dark, rotten place. So what's your role with this place? To bring the candlelight, to bring the golden soul energy here. Is it a curse or is it a gift? It's like you're an energy healer. What can you say, you know? Energy healers don't need to heal what's already healed. It's like, uh, it's like uh, we, we overlook the, the terribly broken leg in order to, I don't know, refresh the wrinkles on the face. It's like, uh, I don't think the wrinkles are so important as that broken leg you got there. So you go, you're attracted to where the pain is. Like the real, real, it's, the sound is so much louder than anything else. So much more important than the sound of anything else. This is the sounds that you're hearing is the sounds of real decay and rot and true despair. And no wonder it would feel annoying and confusing and uncomfortable. And it isn't. I don't feel that vibrationally it looks bad. This isn't evil. It's just lost in its own suffering, okay? Evil is by choice and enjoying it. This is like imprisoned with a behavior it can't stop and it's just sort of lost in it. That's why the purgatory sensation to it. It's like a living hell space just stuck in the same actions forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. This makes you sad. You're still in the bubble. And I say you can come out if you want to, or you can stay in the bubble. It's whatever you're comfortable with at this time. 
but I, I'm in the bubble of my own light, you know? And so I have a candle in my heart too. So I'm just in the light of myself. But I, I've been doing this for so long. I'm not really, I'm not afraid to just be exposed here. I'm not afraid of people seeing me here. I don't feel like I'm, I have an attachment to anything other than what I'm called to do at this time. I don't need to pull things back into my life with me. It's just, what am I called to do? I'll do that. Done. You know? Closing up shop for today. Gonna go be a human now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's how I manage this. You start to cry. Y you are actually leaving the golden bubble. And you you're, you're a broken fairy. Um, is what you look like. It's really cool, believe it or not. It's like, I didn't expect that, okay? Uh, your wings are really tattered. Uh, it looks like you're in pain and you're crying these incredible tears, actually. Like medicinal tears. And you just start to cry and cry. And I hear from your, the sensation of sadness that is whole. And what it, it's like a wholeness in this grief. It's a wholeness in the sadness. It's an honest sadness. It starts to move the energy of this whole space. It starts to kind of lift up waves even. Like it's almost like starting to create an ocean of movement in here. And this is part of your own heart. This is part of your own grief and sadness. This is part of your own soul reflection. You're familiar with this. And you're not small by any means, okay? You're a regular sized human. Hmm. There's something about this white kind of demonic figure here. Because he does stop what he's doing and he looks at you and you cry and you feel confident in your tears. You just know this is what you feel inspired to do and you do it. Without saying, shh, maybe I should be quieter, or maybe I shouldn't expose myself, or maybe this is a bad idea, or I should get back in my little orb of light. No, you just come out with it. Because something of your kin is here. There's something familiar here. And this gargoyle is still looking at you like um, your tears are helping to remind him of something he forgot about in his own mind, like uh, his own soul. It's like he's been out of commission in this strange action without realizing where he is or why he is there. There's a lot more here than I'm able to really see in the scene. This white gargoyle is really noticeable. He stands up and he looks at you. And he starts to remember what his role is. It's some kind of war. Because his claws, he, he wants to end your life. Because if... if what you represent is, imagine you, your soul's familiar with this a place and time where there's, there are like humans that have wings and then there's these creatures and there's uh, an inability for there to be a blending between these two races because they're different natures. They literally are of nature, but they're of different natures. One is sort of creative, spirited, harmonious, and the other is a consumer, is a predator. It's just like in that gargoyle, that, that uh, goblin-y thing's nature, you know? It is strong, though. It's got a very strong body. It's not skinny. It uh, looks like a strong, healthy creature. But it, when it starts to hear your sorrow, it remembers, but it remembers with aggression, and it wants you to stop. And it takes its claw and it wants to like slice you across the face. It wants you to cut you to pieces and end your life. And something is still not reconciled here between, I guess you could say, creation and destruction from this memory. 
and the buildup of rot is something that's been happening here around your heart all around like an inner tube around your whole um, energy your whole body interconnected with something more present and close to home is generational gift that can open the door to an expansion but it does work more on the dark side of the spectrum which you'll realize the dark side of the spectrum is exactly where a healer needs to be because you're bringing the light because you're familiar with the light of the heaven and you're bringing the heaven into the hell so that's what a healer does you bring the heaven into the hell and the hell is gross it is full of rot it is full of lost souls it is full of this stuff but it you don't have to force yourself upon it you just remind it and then allow it to decide for itself what its next path is and oftentimes it's it's like it's longing to let go of its own pain and you can feel it you can just feel it you know so i'm i'm just watching you watching this being and he just wants you to stop crying because you you're making waves and you're loud and you're felt and you're helping to remind him of where it all began and he just wants to rip you apart like was so familiar at that time and it's really hard for him to change his nature It'd be like asking a snake to behave like a bunny rabbit it just doesn't make sense you know but what you do is you don't um try to run away from him and his swipes you just hug him and you cry and you say it's time it's time for change it's time to move on it's time to let go and you just hug him this uh, creature with claws that rip you to pieces and he's confused by this because he's still connected to the never-ending consumption of the rot here you're the doorway that's reminding him of other things, other dimensions, other aspects of himself. I just see that what is happening is he's becoming less and less visible in the scene. This gargoyle-y, this goblin-y looking creature is becoming less visible. Like fading away, just like it's turning into a ghost and now it's turning into nothing and it's just you. But there's a very long walk ahead. And I see that you, you are walking and you're covered in blood and you're covered in even, I don't know, it's like rips in your flesh and I see even muscle and perhaps fat. I don't know, part, parts of your flesh are out. Like, and you're walking, it's ridiculously painful. But you're walking to what is called a sacred site. It's a site, a sacred site. But to me and my vision of it, it's everything's covered in blood. And I don't, I, there's no real nature here. It's just like a bloody space. And I feel like it would be a kind of cemetery. But a cemetery where it can't hold any more of the dead and that the dead can't be buried properly. Like the souls are just like part of the blood that is everywhere. And you cry here. And you're just releasing and releasing and releasing like... This is so long overdue. This is soul level stuff. This isn't day to day human life. This is soul level stuff. And he starts speaking another language, like a light language, but it's really in type of words, like you're speaking your own language. And it's part of some kind of statement to the universe or to the energies of nature, some magical language, uh, some kind of alternate energy language. As you place your hands onto the ground here. But you say something of the kind... Um, I give up my flesh or I give up my soul to set these souls free. Almost putting yourself in bondage as long as all the other souls can be set free and you will endure. And by the way, and you can do that. You don't have to do that in the energy world, by the way. Like, it's a profound sacrifice, but it's not necessary. Like energetically, not. it's not necessary. It's not... Um, it, I know what it sounds like to a human being. It's something that, wow, what a sacrifice. But vibrationally, it's 
in the energy side of things, you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to set all these soul free by putting yourself in bondage. You could have set the souls free to, and set yourself free and set this whole place free. You need to be always thinking in this way because that's the truth of what healing is all about, not healing others and imprisoning yourself. That's not what healers do. We want to heal it all. And we don't have to give up something of yourself in order to help another in the energy world. I mean, you can, and that gives purpose to life learning, you know? But that's what you do. And uh, I start to see it's honored. And there's uh, weird drops of white that kind of, and they look like pieces of like fat that's been in the air, like off a piece of meat. They're just like little beads of white squishy material. Like you could smush it. And it there starts to be many of these kind of appear here. And there are lots and lots. They represent individual souls, but they're starting to collect into one being. And again, this is a place of the dead. It's a cemetery type sacred space. Uh, there's a familiarity with this dimension to your own soul paralleling today and some kind of um, intuitive talent of yours that is a gift, not a curse. Might be a little intimidating though because you have to acclimate to it. I don't know if it's got scary dreams or if it's got scary images and it's a little fearful at first, but I see that you've got what it takes to adjust. And just knowing that is going to make it easier. It's going to make you feel more confident. It's a female sort of representation of the collective group. And there she has blood and she does this hand here and then she does this hand there. So you have blood on your face like that. She bows and she closes her eyes and then all the beads of fat turn into little um, like seeds of light. And they have like little umbrellas or something that they kind of caught in the wind of this place, <laughs> they just start to go everywhere, like little lightning bugs or something. It's really, really sweet. It feels um, adorable. <laughs> it's very adorable. But you are still sad because you are still, you're holding on to this place out of a sense of um, duty or honor that is then imprisoning yourself. So you're going to have to realize it's time to get out of the way of duty and honor some, like you're the gatekeeper of this space that is only as alive as you choose to be alive in it. It's just, uh, you say that, you know, you still have purpose here. You know, you know this. And I say, okay. And if everything is following your heart then you've done everything right. I just want to make sure I tell you these things because your human self is going to watch this and it's important that we just know this stuff. But you're right. If your heart is telling you this is what you've got to do, it's what you've got to do. And your heart is guiding you to something new and it's telling you that you need to, to almost like uh, plant a garden, like turn this into a sanctuary. An actual healthy one. There's uh, still representations of destruction here that I don't want to let go. And you're sort of the keeper of bringing harmony to this place. But your heart is really refreshed and there's a lot that is within your heart. And you just start to spread out what I can only describe as a golden light. And it's very magical to feel it. And this space, I don't know how big it is, but it goes on and on and on. And it's got many kind of creepy sides to it. Like there's some kind of prairies of blood with dogs, like starving dogs running all the time. It's like uh, trees that are unsettled and creaking, like haunted. It's just very haunted here. And everything's all blood and rot. 
but you kind of wave your hand around like this. And when you wave your hand around, it's just like when you were crying, you're making ocean waves here. You're moving the energy of this place just by you being here, by wanting to help. By feeling called to help means that you are the, the key, literally are the key. Like a key to a locked door, that you're the key to the healing of this. And you feel that's true in your heart. And so you're very honoring of, of what your heart is asking of you, which means you're a good listener to what is the inner voice, the loving inner voice. And it's, it doesn't have to speak with words. It feels, it just feels, you know? Okay, so you've waved your hand um, in every direction. It's kind of a circular space and it's very big. And as you wave your hand, it, it sends the golden light and the golden light just comes out in these ripples in every direction, okay? And they start to see a blue doorway up here. And there's a being at the door and the being is asking you to um, walk through this doorway. That it's time now and you know that is true as well. You, you ask that a certain type of tree be planted in the center and that this, all of this decay feeds the tree and that the tree gives life to a totally new environment here. That the tree heals it. It's kind of like um, the tree of life, you know, it's like a tree that starts it all over in a fresh, brand new way, a beautiful way. And it is heard. Your request is heard. Your energy is felt. I don't necessarily see a seed planted in a tree growing. I just see that you're called to walk through this door and that you have to trust that the rest is in God's hands, so to speak. You're ready to let go of a lot. And your eyes have seen through the lens of the destructive forces and the creative forces. And you know both sides. You know what it's like to be on both sides. And they both express their own type of love. There might be love on the destructive side would be confusing to love on the creative side and vice versa. And so naturally there's a conflict just two different kinds of love. But destruction without creation is death for all. But there has to be a life cycle, so we got to balance the two, you know? And so you understand the balance of nature. And you've experienced being both. It's hard for you to go through this blue door I reach my hand out from the other side and I, I say, come on, come on, come on, let's go. And then you kind of pause and you, you ask your heart, is this right? Your heart actually kind of inhales and exhales and you think about the stars. But you also hear the sound that you can't keep holding on to this place. You need to let it recover in its own time, which means you yourself need to recover in your own time. There's nothing else you owe to this place. Therefore, you don't need to be here any longer. And there's a path that starts to light up at your feet. And the light of this path gives you the ability to move through the door. And we're starting to become a part of this space where the decaying faces are here in the Polaroid. But this time, you're not snuggled in with a black glowing light. 
you're just letting everything grow with new seeds planted. And the seeds are planted in the hearts of all those who have died, that have died with, with a, a murder-type twist to it, um, a destructive force that was quite scary and painful. It's almost like your soul has a sensitive spot for this, these events throughout all times and space, okay? Everywhere. You're attracted to helping souls that have been through a very scary kind of death experience. I have a feeling it's more than just that. Because I see you like a soul, like gardener, and you're just planting seeds and letting things grow. And this uh, underground space where we felt our way here and starting to heal all the faces and their souls are starting to be set free from the bodies. And these are your ancestors, yeah. It could be um, souls of all different kinds, but your family's spirit is with you. Your heritage is with you. And you're starting to kind of resurrect inside yourself a new sense of self and a new love for who you are, your life. A new depth of understanding, which comes from the heart and not the mind of things. A new acclamation to the spirit of who you are. And it is a sort of angelic glow. So, that's what I, I've got. <laughs> hmm. You just never know what you're going to get. I know this is going to help you. You're, you're going to feel a lot brighter today from all of this. It's going to give you a lot to think about. And try testing the waters and see what happens. And it's okay to be afraid sometimes. And sometimes you're just going to be afraid without meaning to. That happens, you know. You just practice. And keep exploring what comes to you and keep listening to your heart. And open the door to try some new things. See what you can do to bring this gift out. So you um, acclimating to the gift um, is a blessing, is it, isn't going to hurt you, is going to heal you and heal others. It's going to bring you to life in a next level way. Um, and I wouldn't be afraid to look into the eyes of anything that looks back. And more than likely, it's just like that, you know, I don't know, goblin -y, just give him a hug. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's disappeared and you have the next purpose. Um, you know, just keep doing what your what is love in your heart is going to move in this whole thing. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so thank you so much for this. And thank you everybody for watching. And if, if any of you are interested in having me take a look at something in your own life, I'd be honored to share wisdom and healing to support you. You can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a great day, everybody.